Well, he's a rising star coming out of the Wolverine State, and he's definitely been making a splash by getting a lot of feature starts in the state of Ohio, and he's no doubt a name to be on the lookout in the years to come. From Adrian, Michigan, on Dave's Home Supply, getting up to speed, we'll be talking with Darren Nida about his start in racing, his 2023 season, including two wins at Butler Speedway, and more. That's coming up next after these messages. Dave's Home Supply specializes in cabinets, flooring, and countertops. Visit their website at daveshomesupply.com to look at products, services, financing, and even a free estimate. Are you looking for bookkeeping, payroll, or income tax services? Then check out the folks at For You Simple Bookkeeping. They are a licensed tax preparer throughout the entire United States. For more information, click on the link in the description. This broadcast is brought to you by Meat Freaks Jerky Club. Get the best jerky the world has to offer straight to your door by visiting meatfreaksjerkyclub.com. Pick your box and plan, tell them where to ship, and receive and enjoy. Log on to meatfreaksjerky.com and use promo code SPEED. Hailing out of Adrian, Michigan, Darren Nida on the phone with us. And Darren, great to have you join us. Yeah, thanks for having me on the show. Well, representing the Wolverine State, but I looked at the map before I uh, I got everything rolling. You guys are right, kind of, kind of actually sort of in that tri-state area where Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan all kind of link up with each other and not too far from Ann Arbor and not too far from Toledo. Yeah, just kind of kind of in between Ann Arbor and Toledo there and, and not really too far from, from Indiana or Ohio, just uh, kind of right there in the middle. Super, super cool. Uh, you know, Butler Motor Speedway, not too far for you guys, and also, uh, obviously, all the wonderful Ohio and Indiana tracks too. Yeah, we're uh, we're we're like, we're about forty five minutes to an hour from Butler, and 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 just over an hour away from Fremont. So we uh, we got a couple of good Saturday options, and then then we go to Attica a lot on Friday, which isn't too far either. So it kind of works out because if if the weather's looking bad down in down in Ohio, we can go up to Butler, and then, like you said earlier, we're not too far from from anything in Indiana. If there's ever a wing sprint car race over there, no doubt. With you, like in the heart of the Great Lakes area, that uh, winter weather can probably be a little on the snowy side and deep snow side. Yeah, we uh, we get our fair share of snow. Um, uh, it hasn't even started yet, and I'm ready to be done with it. <laughs> Well, let's talk about your 2023 season. Really, really a good year for you guys. You've gotten two wins so far, three podiums, five top fives, 13 top tens. You guys have made a lot of features this year, 38 feature starts in 2023. Yeah, we, uh, we've we done a lot more racing this year than we did last year. Um, last year was my first year running sprint cars, and we were just, try- just kind of getting going. Uh, we only had one car and one engine, so if we ever heard a car or an engine or anything like that, we were kind of limited to our, to what we could do. And, uh, this year with, uh, with the help of Steve Harding loaning us an engine for, um, five to 10 shows now, um, we've been able to do a lot more racing and just kind of accumulate more stuff and, and keep building up what we have. Back to back wins in, in middle to late July, July 15th and July 22nd at Butler, um, for some local shows, how big of a confidence boost was that for not just you, but your whole race team? That was really big for us. Um, it felt like I was never going to get one for a while. Mm-hmm. And then after that, we were, I was super confident going into the next weekend after that. And, and when we went back to Attica and all that, um, the next weekend I went, we were down at Paragon Speedway in Paragon, Indiana with the fast series and led over to, over half the race both nights and just made some made some mistakes um the first night i probably led the first 20 22 laps somewhere in there and uh just made a mistake and got over the curb and uh and craig kinzer and brandon spethiller got by me and i just wasn't able to catch back up to him and then on the second night down there we were leading yet again um just felt super confident in my race car both nights and uh and and had a front axle brake on us going into turn one and a restart and got upside down. So that was those were a couple unfortunate nights. But after that, I've just been super confident in the race car that I've been given, and uh, 
just been having a lot of fun. Well, and not to discredit your wins, Butler, but you know, when I when I label it as local non-section shows, Butler has a great weekly program that has some very fast drivers that run there. Yeah, and, and it's really gotten better over the past year, year and a half. Um, Tim Wilbur and the Wilbur family took over up there, and they've just been doing an awesome job. Um, just the little stuff like rolling in and seeing the back of the grandstands is white again, um, and then they put new lights in in the pit area and, and sound in the pit area. So just everything about that place has gotten way better, and I think the All-Star Show, um, this past year really showed how great they've been doing up there. So it's um, it's been getting better and better, and they get been getting more four tens all year long, um, and more guys from Ohio have been showing up. So it's been it's been nice to have another option close to home. It's got a stronger weekly program. Yes, yeah, and I was gonna I was gonna say that I remember it was on Wing Nation that that was a topic for a long time. Uh, in one of the episodes, I think they brought in um, TJ Slideways in, and they specifically talked about how things have improved there to where it is becoming next level and uh, as far as a facility goes. Yeah, Tim's just done an amazing job up there, and, and even the racetrack itself. Um, for a while there down the front stretch, it was, it was almost like a motocross section. There was there was a bunch of, there was like a natural drain right under the flag stand and it went right across the racetrack and there was just a bunch of holes there um, and a bunch of holes almost really all the way around the racetrack. And, and Tim's done a great job getting that place to where it's way more smoothed out now and it's got two grooves to race on. It's just been, it's been pretty awesome to see how far they've come. It's always great to hear that racetracks are improving and getting better versus the other direction, unfortunately, that it can go where they're deteriorating, they're dilapidating, they're falling apart, or they're getting shut down. Yeah, for sure. Um, there's Out here uh, up in Michigan, the 410 options have been getting slimmer and slimmer, so it's a place to be getting getting better now and building up what, they're, what they've got and just putting a lot of effort in in general is great to see. Well, something kind of special happened for you recently. Uh, you were invited to uh, pilot the Dennis and Betty Ganey number six operation with the Midwest Open Wheel Association. And how is that experience kind of kind of getting a phone call like that from a team? Because obviously your results on the racetrack has started to attract some attention some, from some car owners. Yeah, it's, uh, it's awesome. It's just a confidence booster to know that, that people are watching and people are noticing what you're doing. Um, it was it was cool to drive for Dennis because we've been talking about it for a while now. Um, back before I even started racing sprint cars, I met Dennis down at the Chili Bowl um, when I just went down to spectate and uh, met a friend through my grandpa and uh, and Dennis was over there and I met him and it was just he's just a really good guy and a and a great person. Um, so so that was nice to nice to go out and drive for somebody else just to know that people are watching well in, in jacksonville speedway in illinois of the friday program of the illinois double header that place is tight corner elbows up racy little joint yeah for sure it was it was hammered down in hot laps and and juiced up which was which was nice because you don't get a whole lot of that back home um that was different, and it was it was awesome to go somewhere and be struggling to have the front end down the ground, going down the straightaway. Um, and then come later in the night, it was just a really nice cushion right around the fence. Um, it's unfortunate that it took rubber in the feature because I think I think it would have been pretty cool. Well, and and for you, 2023, you said the cold stuff is starting to slowly creep in. What's left on your guys' race schedule? Um, I'm not really sure right now. We're actually in the process of, of putting another car together right now. Um, I think we're going to, we're going to have a race car for this weekend. And I think we're going to try and hit either Fremont Speedway for their last show of the year. We're going to try and go down to Sharon with the Outlaws. We're not hundred percent sure yet. Just kind of piecing everything back together and got to get our engines down at Kistler. Cause I got upside down a couple of weeks at Butler and, uh, and, it, and some dirt got up into the engine. Uh, through the headers so we're just that's down at 
kids are getting all cleaned up, and uh, we're just not 100 percent sure yet about this weekend. Well, and then and beyond that, sure. Well, let's turn the clock back a little bit. You said this is pretty much your second year in sprint cars. Prior to that, racing experience for you, and kind of what inspired you to get into racing. I, as a kid, I was always chasing my dad around at the racetrack. Um, he ran a lot of, he ran a lot of sprint car stuff up in Canada and Ohio and Michigan. Um, a lot of three sixty stuff and a little bit of four ten stuff. So, ever since I was really little, I wanted to be just like him and run sprint cars. Um, so when I was when I was ten, we got into micros uh, right at the end of the year, and in twenty seventeen, and uh, ran a couple races, and I just fell in love with it. Um, so I, we ran we ran micros all the way up until twenty twenty one, and and I had a really good year that year. Uh, I won over thirty features and was just having a blast with it. Um, it was so much fun just to be on the gas every week and and just driving as hard as I could because I had just so much confidence in the race car that I was given. Um, so after that year, we knew it was, it was kind of time to move up. Um, and I'd gotten the opportunity for Max Sambaugh and his family to race their 360 for a weekend up at Tri-City uh, Motor Speedway in Michigan. And uh, and that was a blast. It was At the time, it was the most fun I'd had in a race car. It was just it was crazy how how much different it was from the micros, but just how fun it was. Um, it was, and it was almost like I got thrown to the wolves. I was my first laps in a sprint car were two laps of qualifying. So, um, yeah, just kind of ran micros for a little while and then, and then made the move to sprint cars in 2022. Well, no doubt that had to be eye opening. Just, just the horsepower difference, the size difference and, and the speed difference. Yeah, for sure. It was, it was, I wasn't a hundred percent prepared for, for the speed difference. Um, but I just knew I, uh, I had to be on the gas cause I was, uh, it's a lot easier to slow people down than it is to speed them up. Sure. Sure. Well, and I mean, along the way, I mean, you mentioned Max Stambaugh and then of course your dad, any, has there been anybody kind of came around to kind of be a mentor role or help you help you get dialed in or has it been pretty much a close knit family type deal? Um, this year, uh, we've worked with the Linder family a lot and they've been a huge help. Um, Michael and Steven have just, they've worked with a lot of really good drivers. Um, and they, Michael's a really good driver coach and Steven really knows what he's doing on the setup side of stuff. Um, so I feel like, being with them guys and, and just learning and trying to take in as much as I can every night has been huge for me. And I feel like that's part of the reason why I've been way more competitive this year is just because every night I'm at the racetrack, I know I'm going to have a really good race car and everybody's going to put as much effort into this thing as they can. Um, I just got to go out and got to go out and drive it. So I'm, uh, I feel like that's really elevated me this year. And, uh, working with Michael and Steven Linder and, and Jim Linder and, and the whole Linder family has been huge. Well, and something that, it, I mean, it's just one of those, you, you got to stop and realize like here you are, you're, you're, you know, you're a young man a couple of years ago running in micros and here you are in the thick of it racing a lot in Ohio, which has been the proving grounds and a, definitely a huge developmental area that have had guys go on to some great success whether in Ohio or elsewhere with the world of outlaws, especially for, you know, some of the guys that I know from the West coast, you know, buddy Kofoid, Carson and Cole Macedo. And, uh, you know, even a guy that's actually, uh, not too far from, or at least in the same state, JJ Hickel. Yeah, they've, uh, they've definitely put a lot of people on the map. Um, so has Ohio, the state of Ohio, just, um, I feel like it's like, especially running Attica and Fremont every week. Um, is huge because they're two totally different places. Attica's been uh, like really influential in teaching me how the wings work and just wing speed and how much wing speed really helps everything and just getting forward drive and carrying momentum and all that stuff. Attica's been huge for teaching me about that. And then Fremont's almost the exact opposite. When it gets super slick, it's almost like you just got to slow down and try and outpedal everybody. 
Well, and what's really interesting, and you know, you hear a lot about Pennsylvania, and they've got their established stable of drivers that are very talented and do very well. And sometimes it kind of seems like, and correct me if I'm wrong, that but Ohio gets lost in the shuffle a little bit. You've got the, but you know, it's it's just as important as Pennsylvania, as the Midwest, you know, Knoxville, IRA, and the West Coast with NARC and, and Skagit when it comes to 410 racing. And what's very interesting about it is there's a lot of options of you've got Attica and Fremont Friday, Saturday nights, but then you've got Atomic, you've got the Ohio Valley Sprint Car Association, you've got the Fast on Dirt deal. If you're in that area, and you know, you've got Sharon also, which leads into Lernerville in Western Pennsylvania or Mercer um, in PA. You've got so many options where you can get a lot of races and, and sometimes race three nights a week. Yeah. Um, just being in the state of Ohio, I feel like is a great place to be as a sprint car driver. Um, and the same with Pennsylvania, cause you just have so many different options. Mm-hmm. Um, you can, like you said, you could race three nights a week if you wanted to most, most weeks. And, uh, and you can just go to so many diverse racetracks. Um, like you said, Atomic and, and Waynesfield and Wayne County, they're all just, they've all got their different little, little things to them. And, uh, and all that stuff adds up in a hurry. So you, uh, if like just being in a, in a hotbed like that is, is great for great for learning. Cause there's just so much to take in. Sure. And, and of all, of all the venues that you went to so far, what, I mean, and you might've hit on it already. What would you say is kind of the most trickiest, like, man, like not, not so much you're out to lunch, but it, has taken you some time to develop your driving style to that track? Um, I'd say probably, probably Attica. Um, just late in the night when that place gets really slick. Um, like I've always been able to qualify okay there and heat race well. Like there's been quite a few times now where I've locked myself into the redraw through heat races. And I just feel like I've struggled here recently and, and features, um, until a couple of weeks ago when it, when it kind of started clicking in the past during the all-star shows that they had there, it was just, I really struggled later in the night because it got so slick all the way across and there's moisture on the bottom and there's moisture all the way up. Um, and like, I'd try and I'd go to hit the bottom and feel like I hit the bottom really good. And there's just some dude that just carries wing speed and drives right by me through the middle. Mm-hmm. Um, so just kind of learning how to, how to be almost passive aggressive and carry a bunch of wing speed, but still try and keep the tires under you. Um, I feel like that's really, that's been the trickiest place for me so far. And that's kind of, I think what's taught me the most, especially when I go run places like, like Butler and Wayne County. And they're just, they're just so similar in the fact that wing speed, it tops everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's that's great that you mentioned that because it, it's great you know rolling through the slick, but it's not it went, you know and keeping the tires on you. What's not great is having a lot of speed and looking like you're on an NHRA burnout. Right. Yeah. You're. Uh, you can carry a lot of wing speed, but it's almost it's just as important. It's just as important what happens from center out. If you're if you're just trying to carry as much wing speed from from entry to center as you are from center out, you're not going to be very good because you're just going to be blazing all the way down the back stretch, And then everything that you gained is just going to be out the window. It's almost like throwing an anchor out the side. Sure. Sure. I mean, you can do it if you want, but I mean, eventually, uh, you know, physics takes in and your tire, you know, your tire degradation is going to play havoc to you. Yeah, for sure. I've got, I've got no problem if everybody else wants to do that. Um, but, (laughs) but I'm going to, I'm going to try and do what's best for me. Well, with 2024 coming up, is there any, are you guys wanting to kind of stick to the plan that you guys had this year? Or are you looking at maybe switching things up and traveling outside of things a little bit more? Or, or has that even been discussed with you and the team? We haven't really discussed 2024 a whole lot yet, but I know me personally, I just want to race as much as I can. Um, I'm kind of limited to what I can do right now. Um, both my parents work full-time jobs and I got to go to school, Mm -hmm. um, and all that stuff to where I'm just right now, I'm just trying to get as many opportunities as I can to get out and go race different places and, 
ideally if I could, I'd try and race every day of the week. Um, sure. but, um, so we're not a hundred percent sure what's going to happen yet in 2024. I'm just still trying to look for opportunities to do different stuff. And, uh, and the goal is for me personally to just try and race as much as I possibly can. That's a good goal. That, and I think it's obtainable if you put your mind to it for sure. Yeah, that's, uh, Oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say something that uh, that I was going to say as well is, I don't know if you've heard it, but I, so this could be news to you, but I'm sure you've heard it already. You know, I'm friends with Chase Rodman. I thought what was really cool was that he kind of, in the, the Rodman rundown, mentioned you as one of the, you know, the upcoming prospects as far as sprint car racing in the country goes. And that definitely... It definitely has got to – hopefully it doesn't put pressure on you, but that's definitely going to make you feel good and give you confidence that there's people that are – I mean, we talked about it with Dennis and Betty Ganey, but, you know, that there's other people in the industry that are that are watching you and noticing you and um, think that there's some great things ahead for you. Yeah, I mean, when you hear stuff like that, um, it makes you feel really good. Um, and I just, I just want to keep – uh, doing what I'm doing to try and hear stuff like that. I'm just trying to trying to really prove myself right now, and I'm just trying to run as hard as I can every night, and and just try and get myself out there, um, and for to try and find more opportunities. No doubt, no doubt. Of all the of all the trips that you guys take with the transport, is there any one particular that is? either the most scenic and enjoyable or one that not necessarily that you dread, but can be a little rough because it might be the scenery is not that great or it can seem just really long and feel like you'd take forever getting to the racetrack. I, uh, I dreaded Attica for a while. I just, I just struggled at that place. And, and I feel like it's good that we stuck with it and kept going there. Cause I feel like it's made it way better. Um, but every single, like, it doesn't happen very often, but when my dad says we're going to Wayne County or he asks me if we can go to Wayne County, I'm super excited to do that because I love that place. It's the, Every time I've been there, it's been up on the fence and on the hammer. So it, it, it's been really similar to, like, when I ran Millbridge and Micros. Mm-hmm. Um, you just got to be open entries and attack the corner as hard as you can because if, if not, you're just, you're just throwing everything out the way and it's, I like the fact that you have to be committed at that place. Like in turns one and two, if you're half a car width down on entry and you hit the cushion in the center of the corner, you're throwing the nose and you're in the fence. Um, so I really like this rip in the fence of that place. It's, it's so much fun. That's awesome. Um, for people that want to follow along your journey for the rest of the year, as well as next year, uh, what's the best place as far as like a website or is there a social media account for for news, for stories, for schedule updates, or if you guys have apparel for sale? Yeah, all of our all of our schedule updates are on uh, Dare Not a Racing, whether that be Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Um, and then if you just – we've always got shirts for sale at the racetrack, and uh, we're working on getting an online website set up now to, for T-shirts and updates and all that stuff. Awesome. Well, I'll definitely be uh... – be uh, tuning in on when that happens because definitely want to support you uh, with because I, I strongly believe that getting t-shirts from race teams so so helps you know it's all all the race teams are small businesses and it's a great way to support small businesses yeah for sure everybody that buys t-shirts and all that helps out a ton it's just uh, it, it helps us put more into our program and uh, in advance as a team well, speaking of that topic, who are some people that are helping, either uh, individuals or are there certain sponsors that have came on board for, for you in the 7N operation? Yeah, I, I, uh, I got to thank Toxic Waste Hazardous Counter Candy Company for, for coming on board this past year, and it's been it's been cool with that, just giving candy away and all that, seeing all the younger fans. And then I, gotta, I really got to thank Ackland Insurance and Poor Racing. They're, there are a couple guys that have been with us for, since the beginning of our sprint car journey and uh and they've helped out a ton patrick and k4 are are great people and they come to the racetrack a lot and they always help out and it's uh they've been a huge help along the way and, and so has Auckland insurance um 
he's been with us ever, ever since he heard we were making a move to sprint car racing and uh and we've known him for a while so it's been great um and i really gotta thank the linder family for coming and helping a lot this this year i feel like michael and steven have made just me personally better as a driver and uh and they help with just just how to handle certain situations and I feel like without them, I probably wouldn't be where I'm at right now. I feel like they're part of the reason that I've been so confident in my abilities lately and just been able to go out and drive the thing. Um, and uh, I got to thank, thank Miles Hill from, from Town Line Variety and Hills Racing. He's helped out a ton. He he is one of the people that got us going. And, and same with Susarski X3 and Paving. I mean, they've been huge in, in my whole racing journey um, from – from micros, they helped me out a ton and uh, and just helped me get to the point to where I was at in micros, to where I was I was winning quite a few features and and then in sprint cars, they were they were probably the reason that we that we made the move to sprint cars. Um, they've been just huge supporters. Their whole family's great, and uh, everybody at the Star Skiff Reading and Paving is is awesome. A lot of the employees come to the racetrack when we're at Butler and Fremont and all that. So it's been it's been super cool to to be with all those awesome people all the way along this journey. Well, that's awesome, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how the rest of the future goes for you, Darren, and no doubt it's going to be exciting. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Well, we appreciate you taking the time. I know you're a busy young man getting ready for racing and doing school, but uh, we'll definitely be staying in touch as, as time goes on, and we'll definitely be having you back on here. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on the show today. Well, that is going to do it for this interview. We hope you enjoyed it. Be sure and hit the like and subscribe button on whatever platform you found this interview at. It really helps us grow the channel, and we greatly appreciate it. In the meantime, we'll be back with more content and interviews in the future. Be sure and have a great evening or a great rest of your day, whatever time you're listening.